Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we got duped. This pulse chain is nothing more than a cheap Ethereum fork. We were led to believe it was created to counter the Ethereum gas fees because even paying just a few dollars for a transaction was not right. Well, it looks like pulse chain is not right. Or is it? More on that in just a second. What is going on with the pulse chain blockchain? Everything was running smooth as silk, just like the testnet, everything was going great. Transactions were 0.02 to 0.1 pulse most times. And then all of a sudden, there was a vampire sucking project called Zen that killed the blockchain. Now, could this be a good thing or could this be the devastating end of Pulse as we know it? Only after a few days. Did this man dupe everybody into thinking that he was creating a blockchain to help the little guy, to help the person that can't afford insane gas fees? 20 $30, even 5 to $10 per transaction. This man, did he just ultimately create a blockchain to benefit the rich and have them use it as a playground to price out the entire market? Or is he an absolute genius who used all this and knew it would happen as a reason to help Pulse Chain in the long run? I'm trying to think of both scenarios, trying to keep on the more positive aspect. But guys, this is pretty bad, I will tell you. Okay, we go over here. Okay, I first of all, I tried to mint one of these Zen FTs. I was able to get a mint on this, which wasn't bad. It cost me 1.5 pulse. Okay, and you can see most of these transactions yesterday was 0 0.02, 0 0.01, not even 0 0.1 of a pulse. Okay, this is 0.25 here, but that's how it should be. That's how it was on the test net. And now if we look in here in my wallet of MetaMask, still have this transaction pending to just cancel this transaction you're looking at 105,000 pulse that is just absolutely insane okay at this current rate now i don't care how much pulse is worth that is not okay for a transaction okay so where do we go from here because we go over here to pulse x even to just trade at these current gas prices Let's see what we're looking at, guys. We're looking at 4,000 Pulse to make a swap on PulseX. The problem is I can't do any transactions until I get rid of the pending transaction. And I tried sending zero Pulse to myself, customizing the nonce to my transaction that stuck. That wouldn't work either. So if you guys know a way how to clear this transaction without paying all that Pulse, please let me know. But as of now, I'm stuck on the Pulse Chain blockchain after one day. Luckily, I was able to get into the farms last night, and it's been going good. And let's see how much it would be to harvest in the farms. It would cost 1,700 Pulse, okay? So this is not what this blockchain was supposed to be, from what I was told. And from what Richard Hart had been spewing these last two years about Pulse Chain and why he created Pulse Chain and what Pulse Chain was fixing, what problem in the crypto space Pulse Chain was going to fix, this is not it. Now, let's go back to that original question. Is this good or bad for Pulse Chain? Well, how could this be good for Pulse Chain? Well, there's a few ways it could benefit pulse chain in the long run and the first way is to burn a bunch of pulse and get a bunch of pulse burned okay and also to push out these people getting into zen and using zen as a way to mess up the network which is the reason why zen was created in the first place was to disrupt blockchain that's what zen in a literal term disrupt the blockchain that's what Zen was created to do, and it's doing it on Pulse Chain. Now, the good thing is, is the bridge is not intact yet. So, because of that, you're limited in the amount of Pulse people have to play around with, and it limits the amount of new 
wallets that can come in trading Pulse because you have to have Pulse already to interact with the Pulse chain network. You can't just come on into the network from bridging over your other assets and getting into Pulse. So that's good. So as the more people burn and pay these insane gas fees, eventually it's going to flush out all those people and condense the Pulse, which is good if you're a Pulse holder. The problem is moving forward, if this beats and this gas does not go back to the original levels in, I want to say, a few days or so. Okay, we've seen this on other blockchains. This isn't new for crypto. We've seen blockchains have issues and be fixed. Okay, Bitcoin went through a bit of a hurdle these last couple of weeks with the BRC20s. Okay, gas was like 30 to $50 to send Bitcoin at one point. Okay, now it's back down to $5 around there. Ethereum was up to as high as $30 to $40 to send Ethereum to do a Uniswap transaction, $70 to $80. It's back down to about $10 to do Uniswap, you know, $3 or $4 to send Ethereum. Okay, so can Pulse come back down to at least, you know, I mean, from the test net, I wasn't paying more than half a Pulse. Per transaction normally okay and the fact that they didn't test this out I mean how could you not know that Zen was going to launch on pulse chain and do this didn't you test that on the test net didn't you create your own Zen clone on the test net to test this out I thought they did all that and it looks like they didn't or he purposely knew this would happen and who even knows I mean Jack and Richard could be working together for this purpose. That's kind of crazy out there theory, but you never know in crypto. And what would be the reason? Well, the reason would be to just burn a bunch of pulse and to price people out of the market in the beginning while you're setting everything up. Okay. And I don't know. It's, it could be a diabolical plan. It could be just incompetence from coding the blockchain. Who knows? Who knows, but so far, Pulse has failed its first major test. Its first test, period, it has failed. And that was being able to handle the traffic of a new project coming onto the space. Because we've seen this with Ethereum. It started, CryptoKitties crashed the Ethereum blockchain. That was the first NFT type project. Okay, it recovered from that. And it's recovered and moved on past then. And there's been other projects and... You know, P3D, when that came out, that was clogging up the blockchain as well. But the good blockchains can deal with that and push through. The fact that we're so early and Pulse has already been having these issues two days in. All right, it took CryptoKitties about a year and a half to come out after Ethereum was launched. And before that, you know, you had a bunch of ERC20 token sales. You had a bunch of different stuff that works flawlessly on Ethereum. And then CryptoKitties crashed the blockchain a year and a half in. Pulse, two days in, it's been crashed, okay? And I don't want to hear this, it's not crashed. It is, okay? We go over here, you can't even load the Pulse scan. Okay, we go over here to pending transactions. A lot of this isn't even legitimate here. Pending transactions, it's showing zero. Last time, there are no pending transactions. That's not accurate. I have a pending transaction right here. Okay, this isn't even showing up on the blockchain, my pending transaction. That's a problem. Okay, so just little things like this I didn't expect to happen after waiting this long and perfecting this blockchain that much that they've been doing. Maybe they haven't been. Maybe this is all just fun and games to have a big laugh in the face of the crypto space and price all the little people out so the big whales can have their fun at our expense. Who knows? Who knows what really is going on here in cryptocurrency? The main thing is, is that we have to be alert and think about what is going on. And the first thing we have to think about is what is the reasoning and why these things are happening? Okay, because, you know, making a blockchain is not easy, guys. You know, a lot of people take Tron for granted. Okay, Tron, think about it. It's its own blockchain. 
It's not a fork of anything. It's got its own blockchain. It's got its own wallet. It's its own thing. Okay? Pulse is a fork of Ethereum. Polygon, a fork of Ethereum. Binance Smart Chain, fork of Ethereum. Avalanche, fork of Ethereum. Okay, Tron is its own thing. So, you know, we take that for granted, you know, and it's pretty damn flawless and cheap to transact on Tron. Okay, yes. Is it more centralized? Yes. So, I get it. There's always a battle in crypto of being decentralized and being cheap and fast to use. That's always been a battle and a struggle to combine the both seamlessly. That's what Pulse Chain was supposed to be. Is it going to be that eventually? I hope so. I still have faith in the project that it will be. But so far, it has failed its first major test. Now, could this all change once we get pricing in here? And maybe that has something to do because the gas fees tie into the price of Pulse? I don't know. I don't know if that can be affected. But if it can, then... Maybe this is all just a quick little way to burn a bunch of polls and freak people out and cause eyes to be looking at the project and cause panic so people that didn't sacrifice, maybe the people that did start to dump and they can get in at a cheaper price. Who knows? Who knows why these things happen in crypto? There's a lot of reasons, but right off the bat, guys, not a good start in my opinion. Didn't expect this from the test net and the way things were going in the first day that we would already be running into this type of issue that Pulse Chain was created in the first place to stop this type of issue. It just It's just kind of a slap in the face to your average investor into Pulse Chain and it just it doesn't look good to start off with, okay? But... The good thing is, it's day two. There's a long way to go with this project. Blockchains have hurdles. Okay, There's been many problems with different blockchains that have been fixed and have gotten better. Can Pulse recover from this? We will see. I hope it does because I like the project. It was really good. And look how much popularity it already has. There's a bunch of people that want to get into Pulse Chain that are waiting for that bridge to open up to come into Pulse Chain. Okay, so the popularity is there. The market cap will be there. The liquidity will be there. Okay, Pulse will easily be 3 to 10 billion in that range. Okay, Tron, you know, it can rival Tron easily. You know, Binance Smart Chain, that would be the peak. You know, 40 billion, 50 billion, something like that. Okay, but when you have transaction fees that are more expensive than Polygon, Avalanche, and Binance Smart Chain combined, you're not going to have the type of adoption and popularity and use that you thought you were going to have. So until that can get fixed, this project is not going to be fixed. So that is step one. We shall see. We shall see if the great, the one and only Richard Hart, if this is all some diabolical scheme in the beginning to burn a bunch of pulse and to kick the bad actors to the curb and to flush the network of all these blood-sucking vampires we shall see we shall see if that is what is going on or if this is just a big slap in the face to everybody that we've been duped and pulse chain is not what it was intended to be or they just completely failed on the project. Time will tell. Time moves fast in crypto. But for now, guys, Pulse Chain has failed its first test. And with that, I will try to stay positive. I hope you guys do as well. I hope you guys are having a great day. Don't get caught up in spending this type of gas at the moment. Wait it out. And let's have some patience. We've had enough patience for over two years. We can have a little more patience. And let's just watch and see. In any case, it's exciting, it's entertaining, and it's keeping everybody on the edge of their seat, that's for sure. So, with that, hope you guys have a great day wherever you are. Until the next time, we will talk again. Take care and take charge. Creative Crypto, out.